All right, here we go. Well, welcome, guys. I'm so glad you're here today. It is Thursday, so that's always a great sign. We have almost made it to the end of the week. So today we are covering um, 2.03, a model of an atom, and we'll go through that lesson and just talk a little bit more about what an atom looks like and what parts are included in an atom. So hopefully you've gone through the history of the atomic theory. I think that's an interesting lesson too and seeing how our model has evolved. So as we get started, our motivation for today um, is there's as many atoms in a single molecule of your DNA as there are stars in the typical galaxy. So we are, each of us, a little universe. So something to think about there. All right, remember our class etiquette is during the lesson we want to keep chat focused, um, especially so you can keep your chat privileges. We want to be kind and appropriate in chat, so if you have nothing nice to say that is going to make someone smile, then keep it to yourself. Uh, yes, we will be playing a Kahoot at the end, so we're going to move pretty quickly. A reminder that um, I can see all private chat, so please make sure everything in there is appropriate. And um, if you are a distracting chatter or you're being unkind, you will be muted. And then remember that our live sessions are not required. So if you're in here against your will and you um, really don't want to be here or you have um, other things that you really, really need to be working on, you're behind, they're not required. Um, so you um, definitely can leave, but um, please don't log into the session and just walk away. Um, it makes it difficult to, when we play games or divide up or things like that, um, if there's just a, a body and no interaction. So just that reminder. All right. Also remember that this is a recorded session. Um, the chat is recorded as well. And um, you guys that choose to be on webcams in the live session, you're agreeing that your image can be shown in the recording. So um, if anyone wants to be on webcam, you can. There are six, actually five spots available, five more you can jump on. Um, Taylor, can you please um, just not comment in chat? And we will go ahead and move on. All right, so our objective today, we want to interact with our peers. Um, it's always fun to join in and play games. And um, we definitely want to take a look at our curriculum on atoms. And we're talking about just understanding atoms and how they work. And um, we definitely want to have fun too. All right, so a tip for later, we will be playing a Kahoot a little bit later. Um, if you want to download that app on a different device, I encourage you to do so. Um, it does make the gaming experience a little more enjoyable, um, a lot less lag. That is not required, but just an option. So our video that we're starting off with today, Science of the Day, is what is an atom? So we have just a real quick two-minute video to share. So let me get that going for us. All right, everybody, hopefully you were able to click play on that and it was ready to go for you. So the next thing I want to do is enable the whiteboard tools. Please be respectful of the whiteboard, but put some of the words that you heard in that video. I'm going to let us go for one minute and see how many words we can fill up. Can we fill up this whole board in one minute? So Alexa, set a timer for one minute. All right, if you're not sure how to use the whiteboard tools, just go to the little box on the side. You can use the third one down, which is the pin, and you can use the fourth one down, which is like the little paragraph box. If you make a mistake and you need to erase, you can go up to the top where the little square and arrow is and 
just um, erase it, erase yours only. I'm seeing lots of great words, excellent. So by doing this, believe it or not, you are storing these words in your brain even more to recall them a little bit later. All right, anything else we can remember? It looks like we have kind of maxed out helium. We did see that word, excellent. So it looks like we are good to go there. All right, you guys did so great with that. Lots of words. So that means you listened, you learned, you soaked it in. So you will have these words ready to go the next time that you need to recall a little bit on this. All right, so I'm turning off the whiteboard tools now. We're going on to the next screen. So our lesson today is going over, you've learned about models, and now it's talking about building a model. And I know that some students aren't able to do the actual lab with the materials. Um, so I want to just talk to you through like how you could improvise, um, if you're able to um, you know, replace some things like the seeds that you may not have and do um, something that so you're still able to do it. Um, so the materials that we're looking at today are a permanent marker, a ruler, tweezers, seeds, rubber cement, um, poppy seeds, and some stuffing. All right, let's go on. Um, in the procedure, I know sometimes students are like, I really don't understand what to do. I don't see the instruction. So I wanted to show you um, one on the screen in the lesson. You can click through the numbers, and it tells you step one, do this, step two, do this. Um, but if you would rather just print all of those things out, you can click right there. It'll open up a Word document, and um, you're able to have those ready when you build the lab, build your atom, I mean. All right, so as we go on, here are the steps. I know some students weren't really sure what to do. Um, it is easier to draw it. That is the option if you have no materials that you could absolutely not make an atom out of anything in your house, right? Because the object is to build a model. So a drawing, yes, that could work if you were in a bind, but surely there are things in your house that you can build and take a picture of, right? We don't want to take the easy route. We want to go the three-dimensional route. So atoms are three-dimensional. You've seen that in your lesson. Um, so you can kind of convert, and I'll talk you through how to convert the items that are suggested in the lab over to something else. So um, you're going to build a helium model. Helium, we saw in the video, has two neutrons and two protons. That is going to be housed in the nucleus. So along with, you have two electrons that are orbiting outside of the nucleus. So first, it's telling you to color two sesame seeds. I don't know if you've seen those. They're very, very tiny. Um, so if you don't have sesame seeds in your house, find something else that could replace them. It could be a Lego. It could be a rock. It could be anything small, round. Um, and so you'll color two of those, one color so you can tell two of the four, tell them apart. One will be protons. One will be neutrons. Okay. Um, the next step is it's asking you to use rubber cement and attach the colored sesame seeds to the plane. So experiments, yes, you want to do all the experiments. That's how you learn in science. Labs are fun. They're a fun part of science. They teach you how to work through experiments. Um, if you're not able to do it for whatever reason, you can reach out to me and we can talk about an alternative you know, thing for you to do. I usually include that in the instructions as well. All right, so um, basically what is it asking you to do by gluing those sesame seeds together? What is that representing? We have protons and we have neutrons and we're gluing them together in step three. What is it representing? Shouldn't it be too hard? If you want to private chat me, you can. And let me know that you know this answer. Right, the protons and the neutrons are going together. What is it going to represent? If you're not quite sure, read step two. I'll give you a second. 
Yes, Andrew, thank you. They are the nucleus. All right, so um, it talks about gluing those two things together. They represent their ends and nucleus. You have protons, you have neutrons, right? So um, together, you take those, your little nucleus, and it says let it dry, and then in step four, you're basically taking like what would be a cotton ball or the inside of a, um, like the pillow, the stuffing of a pillow, something like that, and you're putting your seeds, um, and it's supposed to be small, like 1.0 or 10 centimeters, so it's pretty small, and you're inserting the seeds. That is your nucleus into the middle of the fiber fill. Okay, and then the glue of the poppy seeds, you know, you glue the electrons over to the outer side of that. All right, so pretty easy, right? It makes sense what we're doing. So you have two electrons glued to the outside, and then you've created um, your nucleus, and you have basically kind of stuffed it down into this fiber fill. All right, so going on. The next thing you have to do is answer the question about what you just did. Pretty easy. So there is um, five questions. Sorry, my phone went off and it was on silent, so I'm turning it off again. All right, so here is a picture of an atom that a student submitted. And you can see there's no sesame seeds in there, right? So the student was able to improvise and make something that looks very, very similar. So the yellow is showing the electrons, the purple is showing the protons, and the blue are the neutrons. So pretty easy. Your model of your atom that you submit needs to have a key as well. So it does need to be labeled. Don't forget that part. Okay? So again, you can answer the questions, right? That's our next step. If you're not ever sure where to find those five questions that go along with it, there is the document. It's in the investigation assignment page. The fiber fill is, I'll show you, it's coming up on the next slide. So that was the white fluffy stuff, like stuffing or a cotton ball. Yes. Thank you guys for answering. So there is the image I have for you. The fiber fill is the white fluffy stuff. So remember that it's supposed to be um, 10, 10 centimeters, right? That's what we read, 10 centimeters. So that's a really small amount, small space. So in the model, here are your questions. And you guys can answer these as we go along because we basically just done the lab. So now you're able to easily answer the questions. Remember, if you change out the materials for question one, you're gonna have to think and translate what do the colored and plain sesame seeds represent? So those are going to be something else. Go back to that key. And then what particles do the poppy seeds represent? So remember, those were something else as well. So if we start with the purple and the blue in the nucleus, what does that represent? I mean, what are those two things? The purple and the blue in the image. Right, we've got protons and neutrons, right. So we're good there. We've identified that. And then what are the poppy seeds? Electrons, yes, thank you. So we've got all of our parts identified for number one. And now we're going on to number two. And um, this is a little bit misleading. I have students who are always kind of struggling with this one. Um, what does the fiber fill represent? Okay, and I always have people tell me it's the electron cloud. But when you go through the lesson, you guys never really read about an electron cloud. Right? I don't think we ever covered that in the lesson. So it's not the electron cloud necessarily. But if you think about it being very, very small and the protons or neutrons are in there, what would that make up? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I can easily tell when they are looked up. When your answers are looked up on Brainly and Google, they are a very specific format and that's pretty easy to track. All right, so it's talking about the cotton, right? The fluffy white part and the protons and the neutrons are in there. So what did that make up? It's not the atom. So you guys have said atom, it's not it. The atom is the whole thing. We're talking about just the white part. You're right, Hannah, you said it, it is the nucleus. So a lot of you are filling that, figuring that out. It's the nucleus. So the nucleus is where most of the mass of the atom is. So great job. So number three, in an atomic model, what particles are found inside the nucleus? So if we're looking at the picture, here's our nucleus, here's what's inside. Protons and neutrons. Great job, Rachel. Yes. So number four, what are these things around the nucleus? And so that's how you get an idea of the answer of number two, because it keeps referring to the nucleus. And yes, we're talking about electrons in number four. And then number five, this is where I get some really, really funny answers that are definitely Googled. Um, why are the poppy seeds placed in different places and not together. So we're talking about the electrons. Why are they not right next to each other? And I've had answers that came from Google of students saying the um, poppy seeds are not together so that they can get sunlight and grow. So that would not be a correct answer, right? And it's the fact that more than um, a lot of people have put that in as an answer, is very telling that your copy pasting works. Right, we're not talking about plants or photosynthesis. So we're talking about electrons and why they are on opposite sides of the nucleus. And you guys are saying that they orbit, electrons orbit, they never stay in the same place. They have a negative charge. The nucleus has a positive charge. And if you think about putting a positive and a negative together, they repel. And so that's why those electrons are spinning everywhere. All right, so that is number five. The electrons are in different places because they are orbiting the nucleus because they have a negative charge and the nucleus has a positive charge. You're exactly right, Andrew, like magnets, a north and a south pole. All right, so as we go on, just a reminder for those of you that are still kind of learning this system, you will, Save your Word document, and it has to be a Word document or a PDF, and you'll upload it into the Dropbox. This Dropbox is specific to this lesson, so please don't include your history test or some math equations or something, because it's all going into only my Dropbox that is specific to this lesson. All right, so make sure you're checking your file. Make sure that file is not blank. You would not believe how many files I get that it's just the original document with no answers typed. So please make sure that you don't send a blank document because um, I get so many files. So to have to open it and type back to you and put a zero in that it's blank, it just wastes both of our time. So always check those things, okay? It happens so many times, so just check that for me. All right, so we're going on. We have the Kahoot to play. I know you guys love this game. Um, this is a wrap up of talking about Adam. Let me get the link for you. I have it up already. I'm getting you this link. So this is when you want to open up. If you have the app, please do so. And I'm going to click play and let's Share my screen and I'll get you the game code in one little second. All right. So the game code is 9462391. 9462391. There we go. So you do not have to use your real name, but please use a nice name. 
If you need the link again to get in, just click the blue link and type the code. You will notice if you're playing on looking at my screen, there is a lot of lag. So I apologize. I do encourage you if you can download the app on a different device, it will gain you much faster. All right, if you do not want to play, you're free to watch or you're free to log out. It is up to you. Um, the Kahoots are always going to help you learn. So even if you don't want to answer, they do help you learn the material. So I do encourage you to watch and soak in the information. All right, so we have 19 players. If you're not going to play, but you're going to be in the room, if you want to put up a red X for me, then I'll know not to wait. So the red X is under my name. There's four little boxes. And if you need the link or anything else, let me know. All right, anybody else? Last call, speak now. All right, here we go. 10 questions over Adam. Question one, all known matter is made up of, is it red Legos, blue atoms, gold molecules, or green breakfast? Starting you off easy. So let's see who was the fastest. Okay, we still have students answering, and 14 of you got it correct. Good job. So Zuzu is the winner on that one, question one. Question two, atoms are made up mostly of red empty space, blue protons, gold neutrons, or green imagination. Yeah, if you put Legos on the last one, I don't think you're a serious gamer today. All right, atoms are mostly made of empty space. So if you remember from the um, picture I showed you with that electron that we called it the cloud that really wasn't, that open space, all the particles in it are so tiny. All right, so who is the winner? We didn't really change places on that one. Good deal. So question three. What two particles are found in the nucleus of an atom? Is it red protons and neutrons, blue electrons and neutrons, gold electrons and protons, or green protons and klingons? All right, protons and neutrons is correct. Good job. So Chloe is at four spaces. Good job. Question four. Where is most of the mass in an atom found? Is it the electron cloud, blue empty space, the nucleus, or proton? Where is the most of the mass found? It is in the nucleus. So that is something to think about. Protons and neutrons are there together. Remember when you add those up, that gives you the atomic mass unit. So that's where the most of the mass is in the nucleus. So seven of you got that. The Meg has come up to number one right now. Question five, which particles are the smallest in an atom? The smallest, is it protons, neutrons, electrons, or Lewis? Yeah, I'm not sure where Louis came from. Louis. How many of you say Louis? All right, the electrons is correct. So that's something you got to remember. It is the electrons that are the smallest. Okay, six players just got three in a row. Great job. Going on to question six. If you don't want to play, you can log out. Which particle has a negative charge? Is it protons? Neutrons, electrons, or an ultron? Which one is negative? All 
All right, electrons are negative. Remember, neutrons are neutral, so don't let that trick you. Seven of you got that correct. Let's see. The Meg has the highest answer streak so far, still in number one. All right, which particle has a positive charge? Protons, neutrons, electrons, or quarks? Positive charge. All right, good job. You guys did a little better on this one. Protons, you can always remember P, proton positive. So, are right. awake now. Here we go. So, I win LOL is the highest climber. Question eight. Which particle has no charge? Is it protons, neutrons, electrons, or green klingons? No charge. No charge also means neutral. All right, you guys did great on that one too. It is neutron. All right, let's see. Winner, oh yeah, has the highest answer streak. Great job. And the mega still in first place. So question nine. What is the unit of mass for an atom? They talked about this in the video. Is it kilograms, grams, centimeters, or AMU? Atomic mass unit. All right, eight of you got it correct. Good job. It is atomic mass unit. Excellent. And let's see, Penelope is back with an answer streak of three, the mega still in first place. Now we have one more question. What is the overall charge of an atom? The overall charge, is it plus five, minus five, zero, or it depends on the atom? The overall charge. This one's a little tricky. All right, the correct answer is zero. If you remember, protons and electrons, they are the same number. So if there's 10 protons, there's 10 electrons. If protons are positive, electrons are negative, they cancel each other out, so the overall charge is zero. So good job, two of you got it, brainiacs. So let's see who came in, Penelope's in third. Second place is the Meg, so that means somebody pulled off something major for the win. The winner, oh yeah. All right, good job everyone. So thanks so much for playing. I hope you enjoyed that Kahoot and learned a little bit. And hopefully you were able to get your lesson done as well. All right, so if you need some help, there are flipped recordings. They are, um, there are more coming. I know they're a little bit behind. Um, you can watch the recording of this session later today if you need to go back and get some of these answers or things that you might have missed in the session. Check out the Class Connect recordings there. So if you have questions for me, I'll hang out for just a little bit and um, check in with you if you need something. If not, you are free to go. Have a great day, everyone, and have a great weekend.